What's up guys, Joker here with some Black Ops 2 gameplay as we talk today about the official world reveal for Call of Duty Black Ops 3. If you didn't get to see the new world reveal trailer that Treyarch just released for the game, then check out this link right here where I break down the whole trailer and talk about everything you need to know as of yet in Treyarch's next game. Today we're going to take a look specifically at zombies in Black Ops 3, focusing in on the lore and story of all the easter eggs, as well as what we can expect reasonably as gamers when we get to experience the new maps, potential new weapons, and features. The gameplay you're watching here is from Buried on Black Ops to zombies. I've got my brother Zombie Zack with me and we end up lasting pretty far, well into the 30s, with relative ease. And that's thanks to all the advancements that Treyarch gave us in Black Ops 2 Zombies with the new equipment, with the addition of a bank where you could store your money that you earned, as well as a vault to store one gun of choice that wasn't a ray gun or wasn't monkeys or some other equipment. So I believe it's safe to assume that they are going to bring back the vault and the bank because of the way that they're describing the zombies experience in Black Ops 3. So far, Treyarch has officially stated that the zombies experience will be the biggest experience that it's ever been in any zombies mode. So we can easily infer from this that the maps are going to be massive. They're going to be very big, a lot bigger than they've been before. And that a lot of the changes they brought us with different ideas from what they had in Buried and then what they gave us in Origins will remain in in the next version of Zombies. Now the biggest change that's been confirmed is something that the community has been asking them to do for a long time. So they are finally going to implement an XP system an experience points progression system that will likely include certain types of ranks. It's not going to be based on kills and deaths like the way the ranking works in Black Ops 2. So this is sick news, man. I am so happy that Treyarch is finally bringing us what we've always wanted. Now with respect to the weapons themselves, I'm sure we're going to get a lot of new weapons that are probably a part of the multiplayer side of things, but I hope that they add as many weapons as possible. That's always been a complaint that I've had in every version of Zombies. In Black Ops 1, I was waiting for them to release the M60 and even the AK-47 as usable weapons, which never happened. So I'm hoping that in Black Ops 3 Zombies, Treyarch includes as many weapons from the base game as possible. So let's talk lore and story between all the Easter eggs and the narrative's direction. Now, if there's anything you could note about these Easter eggs, it's their consistency. It's the fact that really from Black Ops 1 through 2, we were given this idea of pursuing a four-player cooperative mission, which was the Easter egg, to accomplish some type of goal or some type of feat. However, that consistency across multiple games is not the only clue that we have as enthusiasts about zombies for what to expect. You see, Treyarch introduced Mob of the Dead in Black Ops 2, and at first glance I thought, okay, it's pretty cool, a nice historical map that from a distance doesn't have much to do with the general easter egg from Transit or Die Rise. This cool story about Alcatraz and the gangsters and that whole era. But if you pay really close attention, there is a crucial theme here that is actually mirrored across the general easter egg in all of Black Ops 2, and it's the biggest clue that we have for what to expect in Black Ops 3's zombies easter eggs. And that is this idea about cycles. In Mob of the Dead, you start out in purgatory, and you are essentially reliving the same day in history over and over again, and the choices you make in this game determine which cycle takes place. You have one outcome or another that can happen, and when you beat one cycle or the other, that actually ends the game. I think it's the only Zombies map in all of Treyarch's Zombies to date that includes an ending, as in you can beat the map. Now this idea is crucial because this is a direct reflection of how the main story easter egg, the one between Dr. Richtofen and Dr. Maxis, plays out. Choosing one path or the other determines two separate cycles of what can potentially happen in the end of the easter eggs after Buried. Not to mention that there is a reason why Treyarch brought us Origins as the last map for Black Ops 2. Of all the possibilities and all the possible other zombies modes or maps they could have given us, they chose to give us Origins, taking us back in time again. So this is another thing. This reiterates the idea that history is not set in stone within this lore. In other words, it's possible to rewrite the events that have happened or transpired based on cycles. So let's see what Treyarch does in Black Ops 3, as right now all indications based on these patterns that have been in place from Black Ops 2 show us that they're going to continue cycles, these patterns where you have possibly multiple easter eggs per map and each easter egg might be in connection with one another across the different maps they give us so that my friends is a little something for us to think about as we await more details in the coming months 
I personally am extremely excited and very thrilled to see what Treyarch brings us in the next Zombies in Black Ops 3, and I'm definitely not alone. So if you are also very excited about zombies, hit me up on Twitter at GamerJokerXP. I'm active daily on there and I will respond as fast as possible to any of your messages or comments. And also like this video by hitting that like button down below if you enjoyed the content. Thank you guys for hanging out and enjoying these thoughts today. I'll see you next time.